Greetings, friends in ADHD. Russ Barkley, back again with another weekly commentary. This is going to be a follow-up to last week's post, the video I did on ADHD medications and neuroprotection. Neuroprotection, as you'll recall, is simply another term for increases in regional brain volumes in those areas of the brain that are found to be smaller in people with ADHD and associated with the severity of their ADHD. So we believe these are the regions and their networks that create or give rise to ADHD and its severity. So what we talked about last week is there are more than 31 studies, mostly in children, but some in adults, that show that staying on stimulant medications, both methylphenidate and amphetamine, for several years resulted in increases in brain volumes relative to people who did not take medication during that time. And these increases brought the brain areas closer to what we see in normal or typically developing individuals. So very important research findings that need more attention, I believe, uh, in future studies. So here I want to go over some issues that I didn't have time to discuss in the last video, but are important for people to bear in mind when it comes to this topic, uh, because a lot of you were raising questions in the reply section to that last video uh, about some of these issues. So let me, uh, let me just bring up my PowerPoint here as always, and, uh, and let's talk about this. Here are remaining issues for us to consider about neuroprotection. First, what percentage of people taking stimulants get such benefits? Well, when I went through the reviews and the individual studies, it appeared that at least among the few papers reporting this percentage, it's about 25 to 40%. So keep in mind, not everybody Taking these stimulants is going to get these benefits, but it looks like a significant minority might. The other thing to keep in mind, uh, as I've already said, is most research is with stimulants. There's one study with the non-stimulant atomoxetine that also suggested some improvements in brain structures, but it's just one study. There are no studies to my knowledge of the other ADHD medications. But those related to methylphenidate, over here that would be drugs like Focalin, Concerta, Ritalin, and so on, and drugs related to the amphetamines, over here that would be brand names like Adderall XR, uh, Vivant, which is Lizdex amphetamine, and so on. Both of those were related to increased brain volumes in these studies. Okay, so what percentage of people get these benefits? We can't say for sure. Uh, appears to be 25 to 40% or more. Next issue we need to keep in mind. Is the increase in regional volume actually linked to improvement in the disorder, in its symptoms, in its impairments maybe? Um, and we just don't know. Some of the studies were looking at that and did find that among the people who benefited through increased brain volume, they did seem to have some reduced symptoms, but most papers didn't really examine that. So back to my point, we just don't know. Much further research is needed on that issue. I mean, it could be that this is what's related to some people recovering from the disorder. We know that about 14% or more of people with ADHD diagnosed in childhood no longer have the disorder by young adulthood. That is, they don't qualify for the diagnosis and would be considered to fall within the typical range of people in their symptoms, their behaviors, and so on. So a very small percentage of people actually might outgrow ADHD. Uh, most, however, do not. So uh, that's another question we might want to take a look at, and that is, is recovery from the disorder related to this neuroprotection or to some other factors like genetics and so on. Next up, which medications are likely to induce this? Is one like methylphenidate better than amphetamine? Is one kind of methylphenidate like Concerta or Focalin? 
Is that better than the other delivery systems for these medications? We don't know. And if particular medications are preferentially beneficial, is it in some regions of the brain more than others? Something we have to keep in mind, but again, we just don't know. What doses does a person have to take in order to induce neuroprotection? Well, the research didn't look at that. It just compared people taking medication to people with the disorder who weren't taking medication matched in other variables. So very important question there. Another one, how long do you need to stay on the medication? Well, in these studies, most people were on for two or more years, although that did vary to some extent across the papers. Uh, so it looks like several years may be needed of medication treatment in order to get these kinds of outcomes. But we aren't sure about that. And it could be that certain durations are better for kids, other durations are better for adults. Again, not sure. What about sex differences in these effects? Uh, no one's looked at that either. Um, does one sex benefit more than the other? from staying on medication? I doubt it, but it's possible. And so we need to take a look at that. Finally, does having a certain coexisting disorder like anxiety, depression, or conduct disorder, or substance use disorder, are those other disorders that often link up with ADHD likely to have some kind of an impact on neuroprotection, good or bad? The studies did not look at comorbidity. So again, we don't know. So just trying to keep you all on your toes out there about this very important issue of neuroprotection. Still an awful lot of questions and an awful lot of research is needed to clarify these questions uh, and to produce more definitive findings. So just thought I ought to keep you aware about these remaining issues to consider. Okay, everybody, thanks for joining me for this commentary. I'll see you later in the week with some more comments on ADHD. And again, thanks as always for joining me. Thanks for subscribing. Please do so if you haven't. Uh, thanks for recommending this channel to others. I'm getting lots of good feedback from people all over the world uh, that are recommending this channel. It's one of the few science-based channels on ADHD out there, I'm being told. So uh, that, that's good news to me, and I really appreciate you spreading uh, the word about this. So thanks, everybody. Live well and be well.